This is Math 99. We are taking a peek at uh, graphs of logarithms, uh, chapter 6.4. And in this section, we're really going to be focused on what kind of the parent graphs look like and then how to move them around. So one thing I want you to remember is that if I have an exponential statement, I can write an equivalent statement as a logarithm, log base b of y. So the graph of this, y equals b to the x, I know it looks like this. It goes through uh, this point, 0, 1, and then it has the steepness up here. Now, the thing that would be, uh, if I wanted to graph y equals log base b of x, notice I just switched the x and the y just so I, because if I graph this, it actually is, is that these are equivalent. So um, if I want to graph this, what it's done is, since this is the inverse of that, it switches all the x's and the y's. So this 0, 1 point becomes the point 1, 0. And it kind of does this nice little mirror reflection across y equals x. So it looks like um, If I think about y equals uh, b to the x, the domain is anything. I can plug in anything I want. So negative infinity to infinity. And the range uh, is anything bigger than 0. So from 0 to positive infinity. And then if this is just the, the reflection of that, the domain and the range basically switch. So the domain of this is 0 to infinity, and the range is anything, uh, negative infinity to infinity. So there's my domain and range pieces. So I'm actually going to look at a couple more little pieces here that I know about these, these graphs of these functions. And this will be a good thing to have. There we go, that grabbed that, I had to fix it. So this is uh, log base b of x when b is greater than 1. We know it goes through the point 1, 0, and it'll go through the point b, 1. Uh, f of x, log base b of x when b is between 0 and 1, it goes through 1, 0, and it still goes through the point b, 1, but now its shape is going to be like this because b, 1 is back, right? b is less than 1. So here it is when... Uh, B is greater than 1. Here it is when B is between 0 and 1. There's kind of our apparent graphs. So if I graphed uh, Y equals log base 2 of X, in that case, my B is 2. Well, I know it's going to go through 1, 0, not 1, 10. And then I know it's also going to go through the point, whatever the base is, 2, 1. You know, and that happens because log base 2 of 2 is 1, right? This is asking 2 to what power gives you 2. 2 to the first power gives you. So there's that. So how about then if I needed to graph uh, log base 2 of x plus 3 with that x plus 3 inside the function? And it might be written as y equals. It might be written in function notation, uh, f of x equals. Well, I know that things that go on inside the function move it left, right. And counterintuitive. So this x plus 3, this will move at left 3. So both these points will get moved left 3. Notice I had an asymptote here at y equals 0, right? It gets closer and closer to it. So that gets shifted back. So I have this asymptote here at s equals negative 3. This point that was at 1, 0 gets moved back. Uh, subtract 3 from it, right, to 2, 0. This point that was at 2, 1, subtract 3 from it gets put to negative 1, 0, and then it's like that. So we're just moving things around, right? Um, notice that down here, x must be greater than negative 3, right? Because I, um, I can't take the logarithm of a negative number and stay in the reals, stay, stay in the real numbers. So there is um, there's an example of a transformation on a shape. So let's move this thing around a little bit. We've already talked about how if I had log base b of something like minus c, this moves it left, right. And notice what's going on is I'm doing stuff inside the function. I'm, I'm affecting the x values before it gets logarithm. So those affect the x values, move it left, right. And it's opposite of what it seems like. If it says minus c, it's going to move it right c. If it moves it, um, if it says plus c, it's going to move it left. That's at that amount c. Also, if I do something outside of the function, just x 
like this. And then I'll just say that this is plus uh, D. This moves it up down. These are Y values, it's outside the function. Like you input the X, log spits out a bunch of Ys, and then you're adding D to it. Up, down, and this one is straight. If it's plus D, it moves it up that amount. If it's uh, minus D, it moves it down that amount. So let's go back to that log base two um, X minus D plus five. Let's sketch a graph. Well, let me think about this. If this, if this was just log base two, I know it's going to go through 0, 1, and 2, 1. And it would look like this with my asymptote uh, here at this 0, at x equals 0. Let's think about what this is due. This, this minus 3 will move it right through, counterintuitive inside. This plus 5 will move it up 5. So moving it left, right, what I'm going to do is add to the x values. x controls left and right. So I'm going to move everything right 3. So like this asymptote that was at 0 is now out here at 3. And uh, let's keep going from here. If I add 3 to this, this would become 3, 1, right? And this would become 5, 1. But I also need to move it up 5. So now I'm going to also add 5 to the y values. So this is going to become the point 3, 5. This will become the point five six whoops sorry that should have been one zero i hope you caught that i will go back and get it in post so that changes this to four that changes this to four okay four five is here five six is here and it does that let me do one more do this one right and i'll call it g so I'm going to start with a log base 5, and that's my parent shape. This is going to move it uh, left 1, so I'll subtract 1 from all the x values. This one will move it down 2, so I'll subtract 2 from all the y values. So just log 5 on its own would go through the point 1, 0, and 5, 1. So it would look like that, an asymptote here. So let me think about what's going to happen. Everything gets moved left one. So that asymptote is back here at negative one. Right, I have these x, y points. What I'm doing to them is I'm subtracting from the x values and subtracting two from the y values. So this point that was at one, zero, go to zero, negative two. This point that was at five, go to subtracting one from it. So four, subtracting two from this negative point at 0, negative 2. We've got this point 4, negative 1. And then I'll try and sketch something that goes through those points. Ah, should be a little smoother of a curve than that. But if I label those points, I am in good shape. All right, I'm hoping uh, that that feels good. There's one more thing I want to add to uh, the sketching. And that's if I have a multiplier out front, like a, let's call it a, an A. The way that it changes it is it, um, it stretches it up down by that multiplier. So essentially what happens is we know that um, we still always have that one zero point that it goes through. Now in A is one, we know that this goes through the point um, B one, but what happens with that A is it stretches it. So it actually gets this a little closer in this way. And this value becomes B to the power of 1 over A. So here's an example. Let's say I had Y equals uh, 2 log base 4 of X. It's going to go through the point uh, 1, 0 still. And then this B to the 1 over A, 1 that it goes through, Let's see, B is the base, A is the multiplier, one-half. So this 4 to the one-half power is 2, right, square root. So this actually now goes through the point uh, 2, 1. And what it does is that B to the 1 over A, it squeezes this closer to 1, so it makes it steeper. It actually stretches it uh, this amount. All right. 
Okay, give those a go. Let me know what questions you have.